Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It is Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 29th of September. And as I said this morning, in the church, uh, we are celebrating today as Saint Michael and All Angels Day to remember the 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 angels and 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 their ministry to us and uh, and their their ministry for God, especially Michael the Archangel, the warrior Archangel, Gabriel the messenger Archangel, and um, and all the others that are not named in Scripture, but we know there are myriad and myriad of angels. Anyway, we give God thanks for them, uh, for the angels, because of their ministry to us. In their obedience to God, they minister for him on our behalf. Um, and as we saw this morning, uh, Peter was released from prison by an angel. Um, the angel doesn't do that every day. And um, and not only that, but they don't show themselves to us every day. Sometimes they are around us, they are here, but we don't see them. They deliver us, but we don't know it because we don't know the danger from which they save us, from which, what, what, that they protect us from. But we thank God for them. And we, we remember all the angels uh, and St. Michael. And of course, we remember the churches that are named in honor of the saint michael and the all angel and all angels today especially we remember saint michael and all angels in manor park father lee and his community his congregation there we pray for them we pray for god's grace and blessing upon that church that priest um, and that community so let us begin our prayer O oh God, <clears throat> make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you, are, you will guide me with your counsel, 
and afterwards receive me with glory. And the collect for this evening. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And and the, the psalm for this evening is Psalm 138, 138. Psalm 138. We say the refrain. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. And our prayer. Lord, our God, supreme over all things, look upon the humble and lowly, and put new strength into our souls to complete your purpose for us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. The psalm of praise and um, I, I like a verse 7 though I walk in the midst of trouble you will preserve me hallelujah that's a uh, that's one of those um, promises of one of those comforting words of the scriptures though I walk in the midst of trouble God will preserve me and I notice I walk into the trouble. Uh, maybe, maybe it's because I'm stubborn. Maybe it's because uh, of my foolish, foolish decisions. But I walk in the midst of trouble. I don't just stumble in it. it doesn't just accidentally happen. I walk into trouble. But yet, yet God will preserve us. As I said, we don't know how much trouble how much uh, that God has saved us from every day through his holy angels. Even though we walk in trouble, he preserves us. He sends his angels to protect us and to watch over us. The New Testament reading is Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. 
and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne surrounding the throne were 24 other um, thrones and seated on them were 24 elders they were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads from the throne came flashes of lightning rumblings and peals of thunder before the throne seven lamps were, bl were blazing these are the seven spirits of God also before the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and in back the first living creature was like a lion the second was like an ox the third had a face like a man the fourth was like an eagle flying eagle each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around even under the, his wings day and night they never stopped saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come whenever the four living creatures give glory honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever they lay their crowns before the throne and say you are worthy our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being and we stop there in my in my studies of revelation i like to point out that revelation chapter 4 and even chapter 5 you could say uh, it, it's a vision john is having a vision of the center of the universe at the at the heart of the universe the the entire universe uh, is is a throne is a throne a throne you know john says after this i looked and before me was a door standing open in heaven and at once i saw in the spirit there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it notice john doesn't know who he can't describe this someone because he's he's he's, he's not he's not visible uh, he just knows someone is sitting on the throne this someone is god god the father but in chapter 5 we are going to um learn that um the, the this someone is not just god the father but jesus himself so chapter 4 and chapter 5 of revelation is telling us that this is the center of the universe and at the center of the universe there is the throne with God the Father and Jesus on that throne right there with God and the Father and you have these creatures angels angelic creatures these are cherubim the four living creatures that represent the all of the all all of God's creation these are cherubim and they they look they have different um different features uh, um we, we are told that um one of them looked like a lion another like an ox another like a man and another like an eagle they represent the four major um aspect you could say of god's creation the the king of the flight the birds the king of the jungle the king of the ox of the 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 the, 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 the bovine the bovine creatures and of course the king of 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 humanity man and 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 these four living creatures are day and night always over and over again are worshiping god the one who sits on the throne and saying holy 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 
over and over. They, it's as if their, 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 their primary responsibility is to give God worship, to give God praise. And then when they do this, the 24 elders who sit on 24 thrones. Now, the 24 elders represent the church, the, the church in, uh, from, from the Old and the New Testament, the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. And, and so the 24 elders are representatives, the 24 representatives of God's people everywhere. And they, they then put their crown before the Lamb, before the one who sits on the throne. I said before the Lamb, but that's to come. That's what's next in chapter 5, which I won't read. I will only read chapter 4 this evening. And, and, and the 24 elders that represent God's people everywhere at every time, they are our representative, you could say. Um, they, they, they then fall down and worship the one who sits on the throne. They lay their crowns before him and they say, you are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive honor and glory and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have there been. These are the songs in heaven, sisters and brothers. These, notice in heaven, the worship is centered on God. You know, sisters and brothers, this is why I am so adamant that all of our worship on earth must be God-centered and God-focused. Uh, because the, the worship in heaven is God-focused and God-centered. You see, uh, too many, too many of worship is about us and about ourselves and drawing attention to us. Some of the songs we sing are more man-centered, human-centered, than they are God-centered. The book of Revelation, especially chapters 4 and 5, which tells us about the worship in heaven, it tells us that, shows us that the kind of worship that exists in heaven and therefore, the kind of worship that needs to exist on earth is a God-centered worship. A worship where we come before God and say, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive honor and glory and power and praise. And you are, you have created all things and, and you are the sustainer and upholder and, uh, of all things. This is our worship, sisters and brothers. Our worship must be God-centered and God-focused. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. And in chapter 5, again, this is to Jesus, to the Lamb. Verse 9, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seal because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchase men for God from every tribe and language and people and so on. The focus is on the lamb. The worship is on the you there is Jesus. Notice verse 12 of chapter 5. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah. That, sisters and brothers, should be, should be the way we worship. Therefore, I say, if our worship is not God-focused and God-centered, if it's not focusing on the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, then our worship is not to God. It's about us. It's about ourselves. We are so self-centered. Everything must be centered on us, even worship. And if worship in heaven is centered on God, then worship on earth must center on God as well. May God help us. May God help us to see this picture of worship in heaven as a paradigm, a model for how we are to worship on earth. Notice our representatives in heaven 
The 24 elders, they put their crowns before God, before the one who sits on the throne. What is their crowns? Their crowns is their achievement. All of, all of their, their achievement, all of their, 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 the things, that, all of their accolades, all the things they, they, they were able to, to, to achieve in this life, they, they lay them down at the feet of the one who sits on the throne and give him worship. It's not mine, it's his. I give him my all, I give him my life, I give him my voice, my hands, my feet, my, 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 my money, my, I give him my crown, I give him everything and worship him. That, sisters and brothers, is worship. And when we start doing that, then we begin to scratch the surface of what it means to experience heavenly worship on earth while we wait. Amen. Amen. It's my little preaching for tonight. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you for the picture of worship in heaven. Worship around the throne. The 24 elders, the four living creatures, the cherubim, as they, as they pay homage to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And so, Lord, we pray that you will grant that our worship on earth will reflect the worship in heaven. So that, Lord, Christ, the one who sits on the throne, God, will be the focus of our worship, will be the center of our worship, will be the, 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 the aim of all our worship. And Lord, we pray that we will, we will decrease, we will become less, and Christ will become greater in our worship, in our lives. That we lay our crowns before him, all that we have and all that we are, all of our achievements, all of our accomplishments, all of our accolades, we, we lay at your feet in honor and praise and worship and adoration to you, O oh God. May we, may we worship you like this on earth in preparation for that glorious worship in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we are praying for Vansittart Road um, today, so that we continue. And we pray for all the people on Vansittart Road. We remember especially those we know, our sister Deborah and her husband John, and of course our brother um, Mr. Gray as well. We pray for them and we ask for God's uh, grace upon them. We pray for all those who are believers who, who live on, on, on Van Sittart world, those who, who, who know Jesus in any meaningful sense, those who truly worship, we pray for them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will uh, strengthen their faith in you. But of course, we also pray for those who live on Van Sittart world, who don't know Jesus, who do not who have never truly worshipped him, who have never bowed the knee and say, my Lord and my God, those who have never really encountered Jesus in any meaningful sense. We pray for them. And so Lord, we pray that you will penetrate by the power of your spirit, the closed doors and closed hearts of those people who live on Van Sittart Road. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer we pray we pray of course for deborah today we pray for deborah and john and we ask for god's blessing upon them we pray that the lord will sustain them and keep them and continue to 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 uh, strengthen them not just in body and mind but also in spirit and faith as well pray for deborah and john today Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our night prayer. Lord, as we come to the end of this day, Lord Jesus, you told us to come to you and bring all of our cares, all of our burdens to you. So we come and we bring our cares to you 
tonight. We lay them at your feet, all the concerns of our hearts, and we pray, O oh God, that you will give us the rest we need tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, the day is over and we turn to you before we take our rest. You have been with us all the day long and for all your mercies, perceived and unperceived, we give you thanks of all that is amiss in us, in thought, word, and deed, we repent. And we ask your gracious forgiveness as we also forgive all who have offended us. Grant us now the blessings of a quiet mind and a trustful spirit, the freedom from fear of a child in his father's house. So let us rest in you at peace with you and with all people. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and give you rest tonight, sisters and brothers, and for all eternity in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, one and all.